As the name implies, dimensional portals are literally doorways to other realms. These portals are often found in caves. Usually the passages are closed, which is a good thing as a lot of scary creatures can come through when they periodically open. Sometimes, even when the portal is closed, you can still see the alien energy disruption in the air and on the surface of the rock faces in the caves. Even when you can't see it, you can sure feel it and it's not a comfortable feeling. Positive energy vortexes are just the opposite. Their energy is always bright and uplifting. The feeling of pure euphoria you get at a positive energy vortex will usually stay with you for at least a few days and up to a week if you visit a powerful one. Many people have actually never felt euphoria in their life. They really don't know what it is. Their visit to a positive energy vortex is often the first time that they experience the amazing feeling of euphoria, which makes their visit to the vortex all the more memorable. Sedona, Arizona is well known for their energy vortexes, but less known, yet far more numerous, and with some a lot more powerful, are the positive energy vortexes in Northern California, Southern Oregon, and spread out along their coasts. Away from the coast, vortexes are often found at waterfalls and on high pointy mountain peaks. They are great places to magically enchant gems, crystals, and other objects, or simply to go and recharge and energize your body. Welcome back to the Celestine Light Esoteric Mystery School. Today I'm going to take you on an exciting trip to the Fairy Ring Vortex and Dimensional Portal. This is a very unusual portal that's right here in Ashland, Oregon, near the area where I live. And it's super exciting. It's an average strength vortex a scale, on a scale of 1 to 10. It's about a 5, but it's very unusual. Almost every vortex has a nearby dimensional doorway. And I say nearby, it couldn't be anywhere from 100 feet away to a quarter mile away from that location. Usually they are not right next to the vortex, but in this case, the positive energy vortex and the dimensional portal are right exactly in the same spot. That already is exceptionally unusual, but even more than that, most dimensional portals, like 95% of them, open horizontally, so it's like walking through a doorway that you would in a room. This dimensional portal opens straight down. And so, where normally if you saw a dimensional portal open, you see this uh, swirling blue light that is like on a wall. In this case, it's more like a swirling tornado and it's going down. And that's the cool part about it. I went up to this vortex and dimensional doorway because I, want, I brought some scientific instruments with me. And I wanted to measure for electromagnetic radiation, differences in compass magnetic uh, locations, to see if there was any difference when I was in this vortex compared to the surrounding land right around it. And so I was so fortunate when I got up there, just as I arrived, the doorway was still open. There was this amazing electric blue swirling tornado right in the middle of the fairy ring. And, and luckily I had my video camera, so I got the video camera out and I shot two short videos of this before it closed down. And I was so excited when I got home because couldn't wait. This is the first time I've ever been able to film an open dimensional portal. And I took a lot of other great videos too in my scientific instruments and they're fantastic but when I downloaded my videos the two that I took of the open doorway were not there. It's not that they were blank. They just It's like I had never taken them. I knew I pushed the record button but for some reason those two didn't record. But all the other ones did with the scientific instruments and what they read was off the scale. Wait till you see this video. Now, normally when I do a video, I do the directions to get to it at the very end. It's just a simple map. Here's a, here's a picture of a map. You follow this road, you follow that road, and you're there. This is a more complicated place to get to, the ferry ring. Getting to Ashland, Oregon is easy. Anybody can find Ashland, Oregon by looking on an area map or using their GPS. Once you're in Ashland, one of the main roads that goes through is called Siskiyou Boulevard. And from Siskiyou Boulevard, there's two roads at two ways you can get up to the ferry ring, vortex, and dimensional doorway. One is to turn on Siskiyou in Mountain, and the other is to turn on Siskiyou in Morton. If you go on Siskiyou in Morton, you're able to drive almost all the way up to the vortex. You can go to the parking area and it's 600 paces from there to the vortex. If you take the other route up Siskiyou in Mountain, then you're going to end up going to the trailway where you're hiking up the mountain. And that's an incredible trip that goes through the Manzanita Tunnel. You have 
over a quarter of a mile, not just a little section, a quarter of a mile of, man, of manzanita trees, which are green all year long, and they grow up over the trail and form a canopy that you're walking through for a quarter of a mile. It's worth the trip to Ashland just to go on that hike through the Manzanita Tunnel. If you can top it off and go also up to the vortex and dimensional doorway, it's unforgettable. Now, I'm going to give you more directions when I show that on the video, but I am going to show that first so you have a choice in how to get to the vortex, the fairy ring, and the dimensional doorway. So, let's go take a look. If you want to hike to the ferry ring, to get to the trailhead, this is where you'll begin. While you're driving on the intersection of Siskiyou Boulevard and Mountain Street, turn on Mountain Street and head up the hill. Southern Oregon University will be on your left. You'll go through one stop sign and then you'll come to a T at the intersection of Prospect and Mountain. At Prospect and Mountain, take a sharp right and then immediately take a sharp left where you'll be once again back on Prospect and Mountain. The road just takes a little jog at that spot. Head, continue heading up the hill, up mountain, and the last crossroad that you will cross before you get to the end of mountain will be Ivy Lane. Once you get to the end of mountain, just park at the end of the road on the side of the road. Immediately after the yellow fire hydrant on the right is the trailhead that you will start up, and we're going to follow my beautiful wife Samara as she hikes up the Manzanita Tunnel towards the ferry range. The tunnel trail is about a quarter of a mile long going continuously through a canopy of the rare manzanita trees. It is an incredible natural feature and it's worth a trip to Ashen just to go on this quarter mile, mile trail which takes about 10 minutes to walk. You see my wife Samara walking it right now. As we watch Samara head up the manzanita tunnel I want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about energy vortexes as there seems to be a lot of misinformation out there. The information that I'm going to impart in this video about energy vortexes and dimensional portals comes from multiple sources, including many years of my own observations. I've been seeing and feeling auric energy for, of all kinds for over 60 years, and I've been teaching other people to see the same thing for a couple of decades. My book, Auras, How to See, Feel, and Know, is a full color book that shows and explains how you and anyone can quickly see and feel auras. It's a very helpful skill. Equally as useful helping me to understand what I see is that I have been full body, full trance channeling Philos, a higher being since the mid 90s. Philos is my living galactic encyclopedia and always has answers for even my most difficult questions. Those of you that have read my books, Inception and Destiny, know that I am also in regular telepathic communication with Lazarus of Bethany. He deals with dimensional portals and the bad characters and creatures that can come through them on a regular basis. Much of the technical aspects of vortexes and portals that I share with you is from knowledge that Lazarus has shared with me. Lazarus is best known to the world as the man the Bible records Jesus resurrecting from the dead. Let's start with the fact that there are both positive and negative energy vortexes. But the word negative does not mean bad. Negative is just different than positive. However, many people do have bad physical reactions such as nausea, dizziness, and sudden headaches when they're around negative energy vortexes because the energy of the vortex is in disharmony with the human auric field. Samara's reached the end of the Manzanita Tunnel Trail. You just continue straight ahead she's, as she's pointing up the hill. Do not go to the left and do not go to the right. Just go straight up the hill and follow that trail. You will end up shortly in about another quarter mile at the dirt road that will lead to the parking area that is the starting point for the trailhead to the man's need of tunnel. Let's start with the fact that there are both positive and negative energy vortexes. Now they could be called energy A and energy B, but the fact is the negative vortexes are disharmonious to most people. Uh, it's not uncommon for people to get headaches and nausea and get dizzy at a negative energy vortex. Positive energy vortexes, on the other hand, tend to make you feel euphoric and, and just full of happiness and joy. So there's a very distinct difference in the energy and so I suppose the name positive and negative is appropriate from that aspect. When you think about positive and negative energy vortexes, think about a bar magnet. Many people think, well, if it's a positive one, it's a, it's a female energy or a receiving energy. If it's a 
negative one, it's a thrusting male energy. This is actually, I think, not a very good uh, way to think about, about vortexes. They are actually connected to each other and they actually both come out of the earth. Most of them are naturally created by the earth. There can be some that are created by atrocities that men do in locations, negative energy vortexes, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But generally speaking, if you think about a bar magnet, and if you ever looked at one of those pictures, I'll put one up on the screen here for you, where you can see a bar magnet, it's got a north pole on the one side and a south pole on the other side. You can see the iron filings and how it shows the magnetic fields. And the interesting thing here is when most people think about that as being just two ends of the same energy. It's actually very, very different energies. Just like a positive and negative energy vortex is a very different energy. So for instance, if you were to take a bar magnet and bend it into a horseshoe shape, you now have a horseshoe magnet, but it still has a north pole and a south pole. To show that these are actually two very different energies, you can do the same experiment that I've done in the past. Remember the old Bic pens that you could get in a whole box of them at school? They'd, they'd be in a little cardboard box, like 24 Bic pens in the box. Well, if you get a box like that, cut off the top, take out all the pens, of course, fill it up with dirt, put 12 earthworms in each box, get two boxes, put 12 earthworms in each box, put the boxes side by side, and then take a horseshoe magnet and stick it against the boxes so that the south pole is on one box and the north pole is on the other box and come back 24 hours later, you're going to be very surprised at the results. What will happen is that all the worms that were in the south pole box will be gone. Now they weren't disintegrated, they just got so agitated by the south pole energy that they all escaped out of the box. They crawled up out of that box as long as you had the dirt that was close enough to the top that they could get out. On the other hand, all the worms in the north pole box will not only still be there, they'll all be down at the very bottom of the box just lying placidly and happily because north pole energy slows down metabolic actions. And I did a lot of other experiments and with magnets as well that prove that the north and south pole are really opposite forms of energy. And this is actually why magnetics can be used for healing. You, see, you can go on the internet and you can see magnetic belts, magnetic wristbands. They are useful for healing wounds and injuries and even some sicknesses and disease, but you have to be using the right energy. And it's just the same with positive and, energy, uh, positive and negative energy vortexes. There's really no useful purpose for the negative ones, but the positive ones make you feel euphoric and happy and wonderful, and those are great. Um, they can help you in many aspects of your life. If, you're, if you need that extra boost, find a positive energy vortex. Now, where do you find them? There's millions of these vortexes. The Earth creates them naturally, just like that magnetic bar, but they're on opposite sides of the world. So if you have a positive energy vortex over here, you're not going to find the negative energy vortex nearby. It's going to be all the way through the Earth on the other side, directly opposite of where the positive one was. But you can find these positive ones in many, many places. Any pointy little hills normally have some little vortex. If you're walking in the forest and all of a sudden you see a tree that's kind of curling around and around and all the other trees that are the same species next to it are just standing straight up, well, that tree probably has a positive energy vortex right next to it that affected its growth. Now, negative energy vortexes, although they can be created naturally, they can also be created by atrocious, horrible things that mankind did at that particular location that was so bad that they form a vortex of negative energy. And that negative energy can remain and be a curse upon that land for many, many years, even hundreds of years. In fact, this is recorded as occurring in the Oracles of Celestine Light in Vivas chapter 24 when Yeshua and his apostles visited the town of Tyre, in today, which is in today's modern-day Lebanon, along the coast. And it, that spot, when they went to visit it, it was some, I think, hundreds of years after Alexander the Great had laid siege to Tyre and totally destroyed the city and done atrocious, horrible, terrible things to the people, which is recorded in detail in the oracles, if you want to read it. And Jesus and his apostles, Yeshua and his apostles, went to that spot to heal that negative energy vortex and to take that curse of that negative energy vortex off the land. Now some people have asked me if energy vortexes, besides being positive and negative, are male and female. Well that assumes then, of course, that, that the male and female have a positive and negative, one's positive and one's negative. And I think that this is not a really accurate way to think about it. 
If you think again about the bar magnet, the Earth itself is a giant magnet, North Pole and South Pole. And it is just one gigantic magnet. It has the same kind of magnetic field that you see with a little bar magnet in the iron filings. And the energy vortexes are coming out of the Earth in both cases. They're both emanating out of the Earth. So there is not one that's a receiving one, things coming in, and another one that's sending out. They're both emanating out of the Earth, but they're emanating opposite forms of energy. And they're connected. Think about that bar magnet. So it starts out as one energy at the top, and as it goes through, it ends up as a different energy on the other end of the planet. If you want to drive up near the ferry ring and have an easy walk from the parking area up on the mountain, you want to go to this intersection of Siskiyou Boulevard and Morton Street and turn on Morton Street and head up the hill. And you're going to continue up that hill for a long ways, a couple miles. You're going to come to this stop sign where the road tees. And at this T, you're going to want to turn to the right but then immediately take another turn to the left because you see that little road to the left, that's a continuation of Morton Street. So you're going to still be on Morton Street, you're going to turn right here, or turn, excuse me, that turn left here, and you're going to end up continuing up the hill uh, of Morton Street. Now, you're going to come to another stop sign and then you're going to start up that steeper part of the hill and Morton's going to wind around and around and up the hill. Just keep following it until you get to the next road. One mile from that intersection where you began at Siskiyou and Morton, you're going to come to this sign pavement narrows. You're going to make a very sharp turn to the left on Ashland Loop Road. And then you're going to go to the dirt road and it's going to occur very shortly. And then once you're on the dirt road, which is mostly an off-road vehicle road, so be aware of that, uh, but you can get up there with your streetcar in the summertime if you're careful. Once you're on that road, it's 1.2 miles from the entrance of the dirt road to the parking area and the trailhead to Ferry Ring. And now we're approaching the parking area on the dirt road. Now if you hiked up through the Manzanita Tunnel and you were going to have intersected this road, then it's a seven-tenths of a mile hike up the road from the point that you intersect it till you get to this very same parking lot that we're now driving up to. Once you're at the parking area, go ahead and park your car in the parking area and then turn around and face the road again that you were just come that you just came off and then you're going to look across the road and you're going to see three little posts across the road three little wooden posts as you're looking out of the parking lot you look over see those three little posts across the road one two three that's the beginning of the trailhead to the ferry ring so you want to go over there and get on the trail to the ferry ring you can see the road you just drove up is right beside it to start with but as you get on this trail and start walking it'll curve around to the left take a little jaunt to the left and then a little curve to the right and then you'll be in the forest walking along the ridge line of the mountain here. So it's really a, it's a very pretty hike. And this part of the hike is very easy. If you happen to have driven up in a car, you could take your kid in a baby stroller on this part of the hike. Both vortexes and dimensional portals have colors. And they can be very brilliant and very varied in their colors. Uh, especially for vortexes. Dimensional portals tend to be mostly that electric, brilliant blue color when they're open and they're swirling. And when they're closed, they tend to have not much color at all, just a kind of an energy diffusion that you can see that there was something there that was energetic. Vortexes, on the other hand, ha tend to have a lot of colors, and those colors vary widely. Philo said that the reason that they vary and the reason that they're so colorful is they're picking up colors from the minerals in the earth that they're passing through as they're coming through and creating that, that vortex. Now, when it comes to power, there's a great difference in the power of vortexes. Uh, we rate them on a scale of 1 to 10. The ferry ring that we're visiting is a 5. They also can cover a, a large area. So typically a vortex is going to be between 10 and 50 feet, but they can be up to a quarter mile wide. They can be huge. And just because it's huge doesn't mean it's powerful. So it could be a quarter mile wide and still just be a 6 or 7, or it could be 10 feet wide and be an 8 or 9. So the, the, the size of the width does not determine the power. The power is what you actually feel when you're on that vortex. And once you've visited enough vortexes, you'll be able to rate them yourself because you'll know the difference between when you're at a one or two when you're, compared to when you're at an eight or nine. Now because vortexes are swirling around in their energy, and it's a constant motion, it doesn't stop, it sometimes can be uh, discombobulating because you're gonna start swirling around yourself. 
And that's not an uncommon thing to happen, that you start swirling with the energy, which is fine as long as you're not on some precipice and you swirl right off of it, because a lot of these vortexes are on pretty pointy areas or on precipices, so, so certainly be careful of that. We don't give a power rating to dimensional doorways, dimensional portals. And the reason is that they're open so seldom, it's really, even if they had a lot of power that you could measure, it's not something that is useful as a measurement because they're just not open enough. Uh, what dimensional portals do is some of them may be open only once every thousand years, others may open every month, they may open for an hour, they may open for a week, they may open for a month or a year. So it just depends upon the portal. The portals are a way to exchange energy between worlds and between dimensions. This is very important. We think about our Earth as being this one little place in the universe, but we are actually connected to many other places in this universe through these portals. Because when they're open, there's an exchange of energy back and forth and atmosphere back and forth between the worlds. And this is vitalizing, revitalizing to both worlds. So it's an essential part. It was the, when the universe was created, these portals were created at that time to help this revitalizing process so that all parts of the universe are continually being recharged with fresh energy. And that's an important thing to remember. While portals can be used as a way to travel between worlds, that is not their primary function. That's not what they were created for. They were created as a way to share energy between worlds and keep them revitalized. As we're approaching the fairy ring, at first it just looks like an, another typical group of trees, seven or eight trees all growing around each other. However, as you get closer, you see these are not seven or eight separate trees, but this is seven or eight shoots coming up from the same root. So this is a circle of root going around and around that circle we have seven or eight different trees all growing up but sharing the same exact root, the fairy ring, very special spot. Here I am approaching the fairy ring from the other side so you get a different perspective. And I'm approaching, you can see the circular route where all the tree trunks are connected. My main purpose in coming up to the fairy ring today was to give it some scientific tests to see if there's any measurable scientific way to look at the energy coming out of this vortex and dimensional portal combination. So I started with a compass and I've got it set on north and I'm trying to be as level as I can and hold it in position as much as I can. And here I am stepping on the circular route and then dropping down into the fairy ring. And let's see what happens to the compass as we bring it down and start moving it around and it's around the bottom of the uh, vortex combination portal. Now this should hold exactly on north if it's normal, but there it's going somewhere else and there it's going somewhere else and how it's going somewhere else completely again totally different directions. No normal compass would do this no matter what. And now it's going a third direction as we go around the bottom of the, of the ferry ring. Now I'm using a tri-field meter which measures magnetic, electrical, and radio microwave emissions to see if there's any change here as we get into the ferry ring. And there was no change with radio or microwave or electrical all those had zero, but magnetic was incredible. As I approached closer to the ferry ring, the indicator needle started being very erratic, and the closer I got, the more uh, erratic and the stronger the reading was. And it was really quite amazing. If you're coming to something normally with one of these meters, it's going to be a very steady increase or decrease in the, in the meter uh, reading. It's not going to be jumping all over the place. But as you'll see, as I step up onto the trunk ring here and get ready to come right into the fairy ring proper, the needle goes all over the place. It never never reads in one place. And I do this everywhere inside. You'll see it's not just in one location. So I'm showing you the meter here and you can see the needle's already starting its erratic movement as I'm right at the edge of the fairy ring. And now I'm going to step down inside the fairy ring and the intensity begins to increase and the erraticness also begins to increase. Now I'm going to go in a circle, so I'm going to see if there was there any particular spot in this fairy ring that's stronger than another, and there wasn't. As I went around the 360 degree circle, you can see the erratic action of the tri-field meter and the magnetic setting is the same at, at all points. At all points, it's just going crazy. 
And then I said, well, you know, maybe it's just down here low, near where the entrance to the dimensional portal was. So I said, well, let's give it a try if I lift it up. So I went over to a, one of the trunks so I could have it as a reference point, and I just started lifting the meter up until it eventually got all the way above my head and I was pointing towards the sky, and you could see it still didn't make any difference. If I was inside the perimeter of the fairy ring, the magnetic energy that was coming from this fairy ring was astounding and very erratic. Again, there's nothing that you could do that's going to be showing this kind of erratic activity with any piece of equipment that you might be measuring. I wanted to test if the magnetic energy that we were reading was just because that dimensional portal had been opened just minutes before I had arrived. So I came back the next day with the same tri-field meter to see if I'd get the same readings in the same exact location in the same way. Now I'm set on the same exact magnetic setting on the tri-field meter, and as you can see, it is reading zero. I'm doing the same 360 degree around the fairy ring turn, and I'm going to do the same when I get over to that trunk, raising it above my head, and at no point does that needle move. So 24 hours earlier, it was going crazy, and 24 hours later, after the energy from the dimensional portal opening has dissipated, no more reading whatsoever, just like any other normal place in the forest for magnetic energy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the visit to the Fairy Ring Vortex and Dimensional Portal as much as I enjoyed visiting it and seeing the amazing difference between reading it right after the doorway was closed and then reading it just a day later with our scientific instruments and seeing the difference. It was astounding, wasn't it? Please like this video, please subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. And until next week, namaste, my brothers and sisters.